if there were justice in the world, I'd be here talking to an all-star. Lock mm-hmm. up with the basketball starts now. <laughs> You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Megdahl, thanking you for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you're following the work my entire staff at The Next is doing over at thenexthoops.com and subscribe to Locked on Women's Basketball. It's free. You can get it on YouTube or anywhere you get your podcast. We appreciate you making us your first listen. And before we go any further, I'm introducing somebody who I've had the privilege of covering since she was an undergrad at Ohio State and Kelsey Mitchell. And Kelsey, I'm going to say, I'm just going to put this out there. So everyone understands this at the top. This is a tremendously talented league. There are all-stars. There are people who are great, who don't make it every year. I talk to everyone around the league. And there are different players where you say, oh, maybe she should, maybe she shouldn't. Whenever your name came up, everyone was like, well, that's crazy that she's not there. Like, it's just universally understood. I mean, I remember you and I talking a few weeks ago, and I just, I was certain. It was very clear with the season that you were having. So I guess the place to start here is just, is there, is it disappointment? Is it just, you know, look, you're looking to measure yourself by a different standard, you know, take me through that for you. Uh, um, I think for me, how it was um, when it first happened and, you know, everything came out. Uh, it's going to sound crazy when I say it, but like, it's always been a little bit harder for me. Uh, my, my journey has always been a little, a little bit more difficult. Um, my journey has always been one where I had to like do more and show more, um, prove myself more. And it's not to take away from any other athlete, um, any other all-star, any other player in the league. It's just my journey, me specifically, has always been a little bit more challenging. And mm-hmm. so when it came out, in a way, i am be honest, Howard, like I wasn't surprised. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of always been like one of those ones where I always had to like, you know, meet a different criteria, meet a standard. Um, not that that was the case, um, you know, it could have been better players, you know, that they, you know, felt should have been there, um, obviously. But me specifically, it's always for me, how I've always had to do more trench work and do a lot more to kind of like, you know, you know, get recognition or get flowers or what you still have it. But it's always been that way for me. So I wasn't really surprised. I wasn't even lie. Um, I, that's fair. I, I That'll make one of us. Uh, you were. You know, and I I disclose this publicly. I'm always accountable for the work I do. You were on my starting ballot. It wasn't just a question of, you know, you ought to be in there. And there's there's some really significant reasons for it that I want to get into. And I appreciate you always indulging me that I go deep into the nerdum of the numbers uh, when I try to sort of capture what kind Mm -hmm. of player you are. But the player on the court that I want to start with that you have become is a finisher at the rim at a level yeah. beyond even where you were. And so just to give our audience the context for it, uh, somebody who is a perimeter animal in so many different ways as a player, yeah. right? You're making 60% of your shots from inside of three feet and you're taking 20.9% of your attempts from inside of three feet, right at the rim. So just take me through a, why that's happening and b the, the ways in which you've kind of elevated your game in that way. How do you go about doing that at, at this point in your career? Right. Uh, I think for me, how it was just like my preseason work. Um, I don't know. God works in mysterious ways. I unfortunately broke my nose uh, before the season started. So I went home. And when I was home, I kind of got back to the, like the foundational work of everything. And when it came to like working on stuff, um, me and my, me and my dad we was very specific on, finishing like uh we, I mean, we had sessions two hour sessions just strictly finishing hmm. um and being able to watch film and like get with coach jared and coach Lowe's and like kind of like sh- like show like where i could be better at and um i just try to make a, a really good effort to make sure if i can be aggressive and get to the paint and you know pick my spots i want them to be in the paint um hmm. and that's just something i've always kind of like took heed of this this season just kind of make sure like stay aggressive get to the paint stay aggressive get to the paint because 
It don't necessarily mean I'm going to score it, but I can, you know, make sure my teammates are getting the looks that they need to. And you, you obviously have always had that combination of speed and strength. I mean, this was, you know, your calling card dating back to the Ohio State days. Was there a moment early on in the season where you got to the rim differently than you had in past years where maybe you scored over someone you weren't necessarily expecting to? Uh, yeah, I'll be honest. Um, for me, it was John Cole Jones. It was one layup I got. I was like, oh, huh. that was kind of cool. <laughs> You know, considering how tall she was, and I look and I'm like, she's going to block this. Now, they don't mean that she didn't block it down the stretch of the game or, you know, in the game, but it was more, I was like, it's not bad. You know, it's kind of like, you see the fruits of your labor a little bit, like, like, dang, like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of coming in, in the way it came. I, I shocked myself. I won't lie. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, listen, if, if I scored over John Paul Jones, I'd probably just play it on a video loop for the rest of my life and never leave the house. So I, I think that's reasonable. So yeah. it, in that way, right, you know, there's numbers, there's accolades, yeah. there different ways to measure it. How are you measuring your progress yourself when you kind of think through who you are as a player? Uh, for me, um, I've always been told that you always judge on your, uh, on your, you know, your ability to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, like I made, you know, I've tried to make a really, really, you know, drastic effort and change to be a little bit more consistent um, statistically, um, leadership wise, and just in so many ways, try to be consistent as possible. And I think that shift is the one that I want to continuously make. Um, I want to get to a point where there's nothing that I cannot do. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get to a point where there's, there's nothing that when my coach requires, I can't do it. Um, and that's just where I want to take my game over time. You've done that. You know, we're talking about near the basket, but you've done that beyond the arc as well. The fact that you're taking a high percentage of threes, one of the highest in terms of percentage of field goal attempts by distance, but you're making 42.2% of them. And you're doing that despite the fact that, you know, there's talent on this Indiana team, don't get me wrong, yeah. but you are the top the scouting reports. Whenever you talk to any head coach, you are the first name on the scouting report. Are you yeah. seeing different looks from beyond the three are you you know what is allowing you to be even more efficient beyond that is it just reps how do you get there uh i'll say a combination of reps um you know that 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 work that you obviously try to put in um to make you know make your muscle memory um as consistent as possible but for me i know a lot man it's just been about confidence it's just been about feeling being able to be a feel and like you think about all the work that we do, all the work that you do, you know, all the stuff that you put into, you know, your podcast and everything like that. Like you think about all the work and it's like, you do all this, you know, for what? And for me, it's just like me finally understanding that you got to be confident in order for stuff to happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of tapping into, you know, my soul as far as like why I'm, why I'm playing and I'm being confident in doing that. So I think making that change mentally kind of helped me out this year. This is a team that allows you to have plenty of looks playing the one, plenty of looks playing the two. Do you feel like you're starting to uh, get a defined sense of where you would fit in on a team that is uh, a winning team, as a playoff team in this league? And the reason I ask that is you have the ability to be either, which is a luxury, obviously, but it also has led to shifting of roles during your time in the WNBA. Yeah, I think I definitely, I definitely believe that on the championship team, I could uh, provide a little bit. I can provide a lot more, um, you know, know that my roles, you know, can bounce off, you know, so many parts of the game um, and be incorporated into any, you know, any system. I think I bring, you know, a certain rhythm and a certain bounce, you know, to a winning team. I think I could. I, I, I want to talk about your models and I want to harken back to a first conversation that you and I had. I remember yeah. back when you were at Ohio State. Um, I first want to just point out to our audience that we are brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bar is starting to sell the coconut brownie chunk puff. Um, okay. Built Bar marshmallows uh, puffs are very, very good. When I go uh, to cover WNBA games, I eat those in the car on my way, and they mm -hmm. uh, provide me low calorie, low sugar, high protein. Although, you know, my performance, I still don't. Uh, score over John Paul Jones. That's the only thing <laughs> that Built Bar can do. So you go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, that's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15. 
So, Kelsey, when we first talked about your game back when you were Ohio State, I remember a couple things. And you forgive a point of personal privilege. I remember seeing you and just I had never seen that game, that combination of athleticism and intensity and ability to lift your teammates that I saw in the way you were playing. And so you and I sat yeah. down. It was, in, it was I, I want to say it was like a back room somewhere at Connecticut because you would come in. It was a UConn, Ohio State. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was asking about you, who you're watching. And you're talking about watching Allen Iverson on YouTube. And you're talking about watching a lot of the NBA players. And that was interesting to me because you're kind of charting a new course for the WNBA. So there's two parts to it. One is... There are, and I know this because I talked to players who are coming up through the system now, they're watching you in the way you were watching AI. Do you feel as if there's a visibility for WNBA players that has improved just over, you know, let's say the six years since we had that conversation? A thousand percent. I think the visibility that we are as, as 144 players are getting now, um, we shift in the culture, we shift in the game. Um, and I think for us, we have so many players in the league that that brings so much to the table that it's hard not to notice. Um, mm -hmm. I think the way we play the game um, as a whole, the whole the whole league, I think we set ourselves aside from the NBA. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I would say for me, I just, I don't know, it's not that I try to model after a guy and that I can't model off of after, you know, you know, your Don Staley's because they're obviously amazing too. But I don't know, it's just I've always like taking heed to that kind of more. Um, mm -hmm. I can't really tell you why, but I don't know, maybe it's the way I was raised, but. Uh, my mom is kind of like, you know, been, you know, mesmerized by the way, you know, the way, like it's like, I don't know, it's like an expression of, it's like a rhythm. It's like a form of expression of watching, you know, your AIs, your Kyries. And it's like, I know you sit in amazement, you know, and you try to do your best to like model your game after them. Well, and, and it, uh, I guess ages us both for me to say this, but when you were coming up, the video was not as readily available. It wasn't so yeah. easy to get. Yeah. Uh, there, first of all, there wasn't a Kelsey Mitchell. And yeah. second of all, there sure wasn't a Kelsey Mitchell easy to get highlight reel on YouTube yeah. the same way that you could. So I just, yeah. you know, accessibility feels like it matters quite a bit on that. But I guess the other part of it is that it just feels to me as uh, women's basketball becomes more universally accessible, there's a logic to having player comps even that go back and forth between mm -hmm. the NBA and the mm -hmm. WNBA between women's college basketball and men's college basketball. Some people shy away from it, but I just I wonder mm -hmm. whether you see it. How I have always seen it is this is one basketball, and yeah. this is not a distinction that makes a lot of sense for people to make, but yeah. how do you feel about it? Um, I think for me, it's because I, I kind of, I'm kind of on, on your side of it. It's like we created so many, like, you know, resources for us to be recognized that I mean, we, we hope that we get to a point where we're going to be everywhere. I mean, you're going to always be able to watch a game. You're going to always get access to to us and how we play the game. Um, I just hope that it's, it's always in a positive way and there's not, you know, any, any quality regarding that. You know what I'm saying? I don't want it to be them versus us, us versus them. Like, mm -hmm. You know, it should be, you know, it's one ball. It's one basketball. And it's right. basketball. Basketball is a universal sport. And it should always be treated as such. So. And, and and I think when there is someone who stands out in a particular, I think just at the at the far end of things, you know, the the most extreme talents are going to have limited comps just by definition, you know, because they're they're doing things that very few people have done. And so I think that's where crossover comes into play. I do. Um, I You know, we're talking a lot about your numbers, but another thing, and, and this stuck with me when you guys came to town, and I was able to see you and see, you know, uh, in, to those who are young in your locker room, who is, you know, five rookies out of, out, yeah. out of the roster. Everyone talked about how vocal you had become. Yeah. And so take me through that decision and sort of how you go about implementing that. How do you go about raising your voice in that way. I don't mean yelling. I mean, you know, yeah. being a voice in that way. Um, Howard, man, it, it, it was like, it, I guess it kind of just clicked because when, it, when our rookies first came in, you could tell how overwhelmed they were mm -hmm. and how lost they felt as far as like on the court stuff and how fast our schedule was going. Mm -hmm. like, man, like I'm a people person 
And I'm, I'm one of the ones where I like, I love to make sure everybody's kind of like feeling okay. And I could tell it was they were at unease. So I was like, man, I kept asking my, I kept asking my, uh, my sister, I was like, what can I do to like, you know, incorporate it? Like, no, like, how can I make them? She was like, you got to speak up. And I think over time, it became a little bit easier, a lot easier, a lot easier for me to like express them, express to them uh, without calling them out instead of calling, but instead calling them up. Um, you, you get them, they've already seen everything. You know, you got draft, you got, we got an NCAA champion, we got, you know, top draft picks. It's like, it's so overwhelming that, you know, you kind of just, and I feel them because I felt the same way. And so for me, I think my leadership kind of just, you know, flourished from a standpoint of like not wanting to see them always kind of like flustered and like uncomfortable. I want to always make sure that they're comfortable. And I think my leadership just kind of came from that, like seeing how uneasy they was when they first got here. Um, and so for me, I think one of the things I could always feel I could do is like, you know, speak on it, like call them up, not call them out and like making sure they was heard, you know? So I think it kind of just came in that way. And so was it difficult for you in terms of the way you conceived of yourself to be thinking <laughs> of a veteran, you know, and, and, and kind of changing that internally as much as it was external? Oh, a thousand percent. I think, cause I'm, I'm, I'm a very soft-spoken person. Um, you won't hear from me a lot. Um, especially like, you know, when it comes to like this world now, you probably won't hear from me much, but when it came to them, I don't know. It's like, it was like a different love. It's kind of like your nieces and, you know, you know, my nieces, I see my nieces a different kind of love. And I like, I seen them, like I can relate in so many ways. And so for me, it was just all about making sure that they were like, they felt my presence as far as support. Um, and that they could, you know, receive any form of information from me without it being so aggressive and so, you know, so negative. And it's just one of those things where I like, I, I, I shock myself sometimes. I won't lie. I shock myself because I'm like, damn, like I didn't do none of this. And now I'm doing this. It's like, I hope it's not a bad thing. And, you know, I get good feedback, you know, effective feedback. You're like, hey, we can call on Kels. You know, you know, Kelsey going to help us out. And I am. And that's right. just one of the, you know, one of the relationships I'm trying to build with them. Well, but, but I mean, to me, that's just, you're a franchise centerpiece. You're the one who this team is being built around. So that makes sense. And then there's also just being reinforced not only by the level of play that you're providing, but if you go in and you see the lineups, you're getting so much time on the court. When I think about like what what is the 2022 Indiana Fever uh, story, what is it going to mean the most? To me, it's this. The uh, most prolific two-person lineup the Indiana Fever have had, 527 minutes, you and Liss, you and Alyssa yeah. Smith. Second, right. you and Victoria Vivians. Third, yep. you and Queen, right? Yep. Fourth, you and you and D Rob. You know, yep. six is you and Emily Enchler. And yep. so, you know, all of these are 400 plus minutes where you guys are getting time on the court to understand one another mm -hmm. as you go forward. I mean, even let's just like talk about this. So, obviously, his I, I saw the number, she's north of 39% from three yeah. over the last uh, month and a half. What do you is she developing as fast as the numbers seem to indicate? Like she seems like she's even gotten beyond where she was when at the start of the year. Oh, a thousand percent. And the one thing that you have to admire about Liz is that and all our rookies, but specifically Liz and Queen, they have this chip on their shoulder that's so big, but it's effective and I love it. Like mm -hmm. it's an unexplainable relationship I have for how they approach the game when it comes to being able to compete. Now, that don't mean that, you know, they're going to outshine and outdo everybody, you know, anything like that. But that will to want to compete is one thing that I love about Liz. And, like, it shows in her work, um, um, when we, like, shooting, like, you know, training, like, it shows. And I think I'm going to enjoy working working with Liz because Liz is hungry. Um, she's hungry. Um, whatever that is, she's hungry. Um, she has that will to want to, like, she want to compete with the best. And you'll find out a lot. Um, and I think all of our rookies kind of have it, but specifically for this, it's like she knows what she want to be and she has a goal that she's going to set to get there. And we I, have to admire most about her. I know, I know you're biased as her teammate, but is she the rookie of the year? The reason I asked is you've got three real good rookies. I'm going to have to make a call on that. At some point. What do you think? Uh, I think, our, I think I'm just be real, man. It's, 
it's less about the accolades and who is of the year, but like our the rookies in this this whole hundred like these teams are man, they amazing. Yeah. Um, you got Austin, you got you know Atlanta with Ryan Howard, you got Liz. I mean, you got so many rookies that you kind of see, and it's like, dang, dang, you know, everybody's like top tier to bad. You know, they're real good, and I don't know, it just makes our league a lot better. It it certainly does, and you know, to the. To the other side of the ball with Emily Ansler and what she has brought so far defensively and also just her personality and the way that's interacting uh, yeah. with you guys with the fever. I, you know, she's someone who brings the type of intensity mm -hmm. that you've talked about. How important is that when you, you, know, you see that kind of buy in from rookies up and down your roster? So when I was talking about the whole leadership and being flustered idea, it was because of people like Emily. Hmm. Um, Emily is like emotionally um, invested to her teammates and to herself. And sometimes it can come off like she puts a lot of weight on the idea of everything being so negative. And like she was the one that I like took the heat to first because I would have to like, like, damn, like, you're amazing. Like, hmm. be amazing. Whatever that is, we both gonna miss, we both gonna hear about, we're gonna shoot up the rim. It's gonna be a lot of stuff to go bad. That don't mean you're not amazing. And kind of reiterating that for him has always been at like the top of my list because I never want her to feel like she's down and out because she be, literally brings everything to the table. I've never seen a more athletic, bouncy, hands on the ball person in my life and play with them. Um, she can catch the ball. She can shoot the three. Like, she can do everything. And a lot of times, I don't think – I try to always give her flowers. Mm -hmm. You know, show her and give her flowers, like, because some people need it, and that's Emily. Yeah. Well, I mean, bottom line is – it is fascinating to see this team develop. And yeah. um, I am really engaged and tuned into seeing yeah. what's what's next. Bottom line, also, did you get to rest? Did you get to relax this weekend instead? Yeah. If they're not going to honor you, did you at least get to rest and relax? Yeah, I mean, I, I had to refine my, I refine my purpose as far as, like, um, I, took, I went to a family union. Um, I haven't been one in, like, five or six years, but, you know, with the seasons and overseas and stuff like that. So I finally got to finally got a chance to get to a family reunion to hang out with my family, um, kickball, um, grilling out, volleyball, anything, you know, just having fun. And I mean, it felt amazing to kind of be with family and, you know, I feel like I was at home. It felt really good. I'm glad you got that experience. I yeah. also hope we get to uh, interact when I cover you next year at the all-star weekend <laughs> do that as well. But yeah. best thing I'm going to leave my listeners with and you with as well Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen yes, every day. Uh, second listen over in the Locked On Network. You can get your latest news and rumors on the NBA in just 30 minutes every day with Locked On NBA. But again, just to our listeners, Locked On NBA, perfectly fine. First, get your Kelsey Mitchell fix. Make sure you watch the Indiana Fever. They should be on national TV regularly. I'm telling you, as somebody who's gotten to see them in person this year, that is shameful. But make sure you get lead pass. You watch them any way you can. I have never gone wrong having the opportunity to watch Kelsey Mitchell play basketball in either way. That's love, Howard. Um, one of the best in the business. We always appreciate you to game while we appreciate you. You get right. your flowers for sure. Thank you, Kelsey. Likewise, <laughs> all the best. And to our listeners, please tune in tomorrow and every day at Lockdown Women's Basketball. I'm your host, Howard Megdahl, wishing you a wonderful day. <laughs> Are Locked On Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.